This MMA 30 segment is powered by Bodybuilding.com, the number one sports nutrition e-tailer. Get the latest products from Muscle Farm at Bodybuilding.com. Our guest today here on the MMA 30 Radio Hour is UFC heavyweight contender Shane Carwin. Shane, it's a big night for you on Saturday night, UFC 131. You're taking on Junior Dos Santos at the Rogers uh, Arena there in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And once again, chomping to the bit, number one contender to the UFC heavyweight crown. <laughs> That's it, you know. That's uh, you know, my goal is to get that that belt. So, uh, you know, this fight uh, gets me one step closer to where I need to be. And this is one of those fights that uh, is a really high profile fight. I mean, you're headlining a UFC pay per view card, but it didn't start out that way uh, because of Brock Lesnar pulling out of the card due to his illness. You got bumped up, and that's a hugely advantageous thing for you because you were facing a guy, or you were supposed to face a guy that is a really dangerous ground fighter. But at the same time, he's not a very known fighter in the UFC, which is which just makes for a very risky fight. When they first approached you about that fight, was it like, hey, do you want this fight, or hey, Shane, you're going to take this? Fight? Uh, no, yeah, most of the time uh, with the UFC, it's uh, you're going to take this fight. So, um, you know, he's very accomplished, uh, you know, so anybody inside the sport knows uh, how, how great of a uh, fighter he is and how accomplished, uh, you know, John um, is in the sport. So, uh, you know, he's a very formidable opponent. This wasn't part of some giant conspiracy theory like Roy Nelson had uh, originally laid out a few months ago. He predicted that something like this would happen. So there, there was no behind the scenes type talk. This was actually you were actually going to fight him. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, no, there was there was no behind the scenes talk or, or any of that uh, hoopla. So uh, you know, I actually found out um, probably twenty minutes, I think, before they they announced it that. Uh, you know, they called and asked if I would fight uh, Junior, and I told them, uh, absolutely, I'd love the opportunity. And, uh, you know, that Brock was out with his diverticulitis, and, you know, he just underwent surgery. Um, so, uh, you know, I was excited, and, you know, 20 minutes later they, they announced that. So uh, it wasn't much more before the, the announcement that I found out. Shane Carwin, our guest today here on the MMA 30 Radio Hour, and we're talking about his big fight coming up against Junior Dos Santos on Saturday at UFC 131. Now, Shane, with it being the number one contender fight and it being Junior Dos Santos, do those things factor into your training camp at all with it being a more high-profile fight, or were you kind of on the path to changing up some of the things that I've seen you talk about in some of your interviews online uh, well before your opponent changed? Oh uh, yeah, we was working on that well before you know the opponent change, and uh, you know you have to take everybody serious in the UFC, and uh, you know we didn't put any uh, more stress on me once it switched to, to junior because uh, you know we were already getting ready and, and prepared to to fight a big name opponent. So uh, you know the only thing that really changed was probably strategy a little bit. Now with the fight at UFC 116 against Brock Lesnar. Uh, you know, some people said, oh, well, Shane Carwin gassed out there in the second round and, and he just wasn't able to finish what he had started in the first round. How do you assess that fight looking back on your match with Brock Lesnar at UFC 116? And do you feel like it was a gas tank issue or uh, something else went wrong? Uh, you know, we think it was, uh, you know, something else that went wrong. It wasn't a gas tank. Um, you know, it, it just... Uh put everything I had and all my eggs in the one basket into finishing him in the first round. And, um, you know, I didn't leave anything, you know, left. Um, so, you know, we've, we've worked on those things um, to try to improve that. But, uh, you know, I, I'm a finisher, and if something like that were to happen again, I would probably try to go in for the kill again as well. Do you feel like you've answered all of the uh, the things that you needed to as far as your nutrition goes? Because when I see you online now, you look like you're a much leaner, meaner Shane Carwin. Well, uh, yeah, you know, it's uh, I, I am leaner. It's a, it's a very uh, healthy diet that I've been on, um, very clean diet. And, uh, you know, every, everything I put in my body is for fuel and recovery. So, um, obviously, it, uh, you know, it, it's helped out, and I think it's made a, a tremendous difference. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to, to see, you know, the results uh, come Saturday. It's always interesting how, how different fighters deal with uh, the first loss in their career. I mean, Leona Machida was somebody that went for, I think, 16 fights before he suffered his first loss. And he's one of the guys that said, you know what, I, of course, I didn't like it at the time, but after it was all said and done, it was actually kind of a relief. Uh, you know, burden off my shoulders not being that undefeated fighter that people were waiting to lose. How do you feel that you dealt with your first loss? You, you, you know, it's um, you take it and you should learn it you know, something from every fight. So win, win or lose and, uh, you know, to become a better fighter and, 
you know, I, I walked out of that uh, the octagon and, and knew that I had left everything in there. So I wasn't disappointed with myself. You know, I was just disappointed with uh, the outcome and, and the way things happened. So, you know, we, we worked to improve on those things and, and make myself a better fighter. One of the things that made me a, a Shane Carwin fan right off the bat is your exciting style. Uh, you're not afraid to stand and trade hands with anybody in the division, but you're also a world-class wrestler. A lot of people consider Junior Dos Santos to be the best pure MMA boxer in the heavyweight division. What's your game plan without giving away too much? Are you going to trade hands with him, or are you going to use your uh, your world-class wrestling base to your advantage? <laughs> um you know, it's every fight starts on your feet. You know, so we have to we have to start there. And uh, I've never been one that's been afraid to bang or or uh, uh, you know trade hands with anybody. So you know, that's where we get to start the fight. And you know, from there, you just have to see you know uh, how how things turn out. You know, that uh, in MMA, you know, a lot of different things can happen inside that that cage. So. Um, you know, like in the, even in the last fight, you saw Junior take Roy down. I don't think anybody was expecting that. Main event of UFC 131, Shane Carwin is fighting Junior Dos Santos. You get a win on Saturday night, Shane. Uh, you're fighting Cain Velasquez next for the, next for the UFC heavyweight title. Uh, Cain Velasquez obviously beat Brock Lesnar back in October to get that title. Do you think that your game plan against Brock Lesnar being as effective as it was in the first round wrote the blueprint for Cain uh, Velasquez's fight against Brock? Uh, you know, his, his fight uh, was awfully similar uh, to my fight, and, uh, you know, I think the difference was is that, uh, you know, he picked his shots uh, a little better on Brock than, uh, you know, what I did. So, uh, you know, I think that that's probably the only difference in, in the fight. And how do you assess Cain Velasquez um, as the current UFC heavyweight champion, and, and what what struggles or what game plan would you have with, uh, with Cain Velasquez if that fight were to happen? Yeah, you know, he's, uh, uh, you know, the the best heavyweight in the world right now. And, uh, you know, I, it would be uh, a super exciting fight for me to be involved with. Uh, you know, we, we both come from similar backgrounds and have worked our way up, uh, you know, the ladder in, in similar ways. So, um, you know, I, I just think that would be another all-out war. You know, it's, uh, you know, just a run of fighting, you know, the top guys in the world here for me. So, um, you know, that's exciting in itself. UFC 131 is this weekend, and being based here in Las Vegas, we're, of course, not going to get to see you outside of being on television. Uh, but I understand that you're coming to town for UFC 132, and you're going to be doing some signings for Head Rush. Is that right? Uh, I think that sounds right, yeah. Yeah, so Shane Carwin is going to be in town at the beginning of July. So big Shane Carwin fans here in the city of Las Vegas, if you want to meet Shane Carwin, there will be opportunities, and I'm sure more details will come out after UFC 131 this weekend. Final question for you. Uh, You're there in Vancouver right now, and hockey has kind of taken over the city, which is unfortunate because when the UFC comes to town, normally that's the biggest deal in the world, but with the being a fight in Canada, in Vancouver, and with Vancouver's team, the Canucks, being in the finals, has that been a distraction at all from what you're seeing uh, with, with the UFC's normal operations? Uh, you know, no, not from what I've been seeing, but, uh, you know, when, you, when you're out on the, the streets and stuff, it's, uh, you know, everybody's wearing their, their Vancouver Canucks and, and talking about the game and, uh, you know, how they're doing and stuff. So, you know, what should be expected, it's a, it's a city that rallies behind their teams. Have you ever thought about, you know, if, you know, after you become world champion one day, maybe retiring and then becoming the, like the baddest hockey enforcer of all time? <laughs> If I could skate on ice, maybe, but uh, I thought I was going to be a hockey player once. I bought some some nice skates, me and a buddy, and I went out on the ice, and five minutes later, I fell straight on my face, and I thought I I broke my jaw and got up, took the skates back to the store, and never skated again. See, that's your problem. No skates. Just run and slide. You'll just plow through <laughs> yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah, maybe if I could wear tennis shoes or something on the ice. <laughs> Shane Carwin, main event of UFC 131. It's happening this Saturday. You can watch the fights on pay-per-view. Taking on Junior Dos Santos, really exciting fight. Personally, I'm more excited about this fight than I was about the Brock JDS fight. Can't wait to see what goes down in the main event on Saturday night. Thanks so much for taking some time for us today, man. Oh, thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it.